Okay, so it's 6 p.m. Do we want to get started? Sure, go for it. Whatever y'all are ready. Yeah, I'm recording whenever y'all are ready. All right, then I'm going to go ahead and kick things off. Hey, everybody, I'm Paige. I use he, they pronouns, and I'm a canine, psychopomp, folk, and terra, and I'm part of a five-person draconic system. I'm the author of the Alter Human comic Shenanigans and the TTRPGs A Wolf in Man's Clothing and Anxious Dragon Hidden Town Folk. I'm the co-owner of the Non-Human National Park Forum. I conducted the 2021 Non-Humanity and Body Modification slash Decoration Survey and the 2022 Abnormal Instinct Survey. I'm the coiner of the terms Coping Link and Folk and Terra, among others. And I was a lecturer at OtherCon last year and this year, if you attended my panel. Hi, I'm, I'm Ryan Scribner. Uh, my pronouns are they, them. I'm a dragon otherkin. Author of the Therian and Otherkin comic, Theri There, running intermittently since 2005, and the community history book, Otherkin Timeline, which have been cited in academic articles both. And we are House of Chimeras. We are a large multiple system of non-humans and Therans. Uh, our system is collect collectively used as they, them pronouns. We're the author of a timeline of the Theron community and academic publications, non-academic pub publications, media, art, and fiction related to non-humanity, among other writings. Uh, we have previously hosted four panels at OtherCon, uh, and our system includes uh, the Phytanthrope who coined the term Phytanthropy and Phytanthrope. Uh, so welcome to... Uh, so you want to write a book about Otherkin, though a brief disclaimer, this panel was a spur-of-the-moment decision by ourselves after learning that, unfortunately, anim animality and dignity was sadly cancelled. Uh, we have had a full eight hours to prepare for this panel. Uh, this will not be the most in-depth panel because of the time, time constraints, but we still hope you will enjoy it. Yeah, pa panel speedrun indeed for the folks I see commenting in the chat. Um, so in this panel, we're going to be looking into what books on other can are already out there, uh, what obstacles other, uh, other can authors in the community have faced and continue to face, and some potential options that aspiring alter human writers can sink their hands or claws into. Uh, to start out, the two biggest books made about other can and the most well-known non-academic non-fiction writing on other can are Rosalind Green's The Magic of Shapeshifting from 2000, and Lupa's A Field Guide to Otherkin from 2007, two uh, pieces that you may or may not be familiar with. And while these two books probably have the largest claim to fame in non-human spaces, with one being confirmed to have been written by then-Therianthrope author Lupa, and Green at least having existed within Ware Spaces when she wrote The Magic of Shapeshifting, uh, they aren't actually the only non-fiction books published on the topic. There are some lesser-known titles such as What If You Are a Horse in Human Form by Jason the Horse from 2011, and Elf Magic Mail, Book 1, The Original Letters of the Elf Queen's Daughters with Commentary by the Silver Elves, by the Silver Elves from 2014, alongside all their other titles. Quite a few books have made mentions of other kin and other alter human groups in passing, both in positive ways, such as Werewolves by Daniel Cohen, Furries Among Us, Essays on Furries by the most prominent members of the fandom, edited by Thurston Howell, Werewolves, The Occult Truth by Constantinos, and in negative ways, like Adam Butler's Monsters in the Closet, exposing real threats to children and teenagers within the home. Otherkin and Alter Humanity have also been an uncommon research topic, sometimes found spoken of in academic journals, such as Nova Religio, the Journal of Alternative and Emergent Religions, and the focus of dissertations like Dr. Proctor's well-known On Being Non-Human, Otherkin Identification, and Virtual Space. In terms of Otherkin writing for and about Otherkin, or Alter Humans writing for and about Alter Humans more generally, it can't help but be acknowledged that so many of the books mentioned that fit, fit that category are from well over a decade ago, with Lupa's A Field Guide to Otherkin even having gone entirely out of print. Despite community size, diversity, and talent, we just don't have that many books out there that are written about ourselves and by ourselves. Although, with that said, it's not like there haven't been attempts to write the new field guide and similar. Knockin, whose name I'm definitely mispronouncing and I totally apologize for that, 
of the Wild Path Library has touched on the idea of formally publishing a new book on non-humanity, and has even conducted the survey, Non-Humanity in Our Own Words, over the last two years in order to gain interest and information on the project. The forums Wearlist and the Discord, uh, Other Connect have relatedly both attempted documentaries of a similar informative nature. But from all, uh, but from everything we can see, none of these projects really went anywhere. So what's the dealio, cool cats? Why can't we get our shit together and write a new book, or do literally anything relatedly? Uh, what are the stopgaps that we're wrestling with compared to what published Xtherians and maybe Wares faced ten years ago? Past attempts at writing a book were, were, were hindered by a lack of resources to cite from. Looper created a survey where she collected long-form res long responses from Therans and Otherkin, but otherwise ha had to heavily depend on information from mythology and folklore to fill, in, to fill con uh, and connect sections together. Green, on the other hand, stuck with the method of, trust me, I know a guy. And what references she did pull from consisted of books about werewolves, witchcraft, and paganism. So research into wares wasn't necessarily her, an obstacle for her. Lesser known books such as Jason the Horses, uh, Are You a Horse in Human Form, uh, and various books by the Silver Elves focus entirely on their own personal experiences and personal mythologies. Like Green, research may have been a component, but it wasn't the main focus when the writing was about their personal experiences. However, at present, any authors have had, it, have had at their disposal several dozen academic dissertations, theses, articles, and more, along with non-academic books, magazine articles, and more, along with several sets of raw data, such as Page's results from his uh, the Non-Humanity non and Body Modification Decoration Survey. So theoretically, research about Research about other kin shouldn't be an issue, right? Right? Incorrect. It's one thing to have all that data. It's another to put it all together in a cohesive whole. More, th off, more than that, it is difficult to figure out how to organize such a book and what to do with all that large amount of information. There's a difference between in how to public... There's difference in how a publication will be written depending on if its audience and purpose, such as the difference from a friendly, a friendly beginner's guide to other kin written by someone who, written for someone who doesn't know anything about the subject, versus a book aimed at other kin who already are well informed of the topic and its pre-existing pre terms and, and writings. Uh, lastly, the bigger thing that Paige has personally seen. Makes, makes group projects of this type fall through. It, it is also impossible to get the community to agree on what should be included or excluded in such a, such a publication. Even within, books organize, even within books, organizing data can be done in various ways. For example, Lupa's Field Guide to Otherkin had chapters dedicated to specific groups, therns, vampires, elves and fae, dragons and other mythical beasts, and a chapter on other other kin, which included a section on media kin. Green's magic of shapeshifting formatted itself around types of experiences, mostly types of shifts. Depending upon how to format and organize this data isn't a simple task at all, especially with the boom of per new, new labels and terms that have been cropping up in the past 10 years compared to what existed in the vocabulary in the early 2000s. Another opinion are anthologies. The furry fandom has a series of anthologies focusing on the fandom called Furries Among Us. From the mytho from the from the mytho mythology from the anthology, various authors wrote about non nonfiction topics related to the fandom. The two books also had different intended audiences and undertones. Uh, the Magic of Shapeshifting, if you've read it, has a much stronger New Age lean, more aimed at individuals intent on learning about stories of physical shapeshifting and literal magic with a strong draw from different spiritualities and traditions. While comparatively, Field Guide to Otherkin is more culturally pagan, with a focus on Otherkin and Therians at its most basic level, drawn directly from both survey responses and the author's own experiences in those communities. 
Publishing companies are also another hurdle that both books likely had to deal with, although neither author has spoken at length about their pitching and publishing process that we know of. Dove with Scales, uh, from Alter Human Publishing House Studio Prey, and who did the Ethnogens, which I probably missed pronouncing, panel uh, earlier yesterday, was asked about her thoughts on the accessibility and barriers that other can may experience when publishing with a pre-established publishing house. She commented that, and I quote, it might be difficult to get a mainstream publisher to take such a book seriously. Because publishers, of course, are all about money, so if they don't think a book is going to sell enough to be worth their investment, they won't pick it up. Oftentimes, it's hard to get a publisher to even look at your book unless it's what they want right now, because they make choices based not on merit, but on market trends. And, as people always do, there have been agreements, disagreements in how both authors spoke about other kin, Therians, and related topics. The shapeshifting of magic included support for incredibly controversial community topics, like physical shifting, as was previously mentioned, and even a field guide to other kin was criticized for including fiction kin. We see much of the same go on in conversations surrounding book projects now as well, on what communities to comment on, what experiences to make note of, and which community discourse and politics, if any, to bring up. So, obviously, it's no walk in the park to get a book published and out there for the community, and there's plenty of very legitimate and understandable obstacles that can get in the way. But let's focus not on the roadblocks themselves, but what you can do to get started on such a journey and hopefully mitigate the problems in your path. Alright, so here's where we talk about how to write a book. Writing a book sounds like an enormous task because in many ways it is one. The perhaps easiest way to tackle it is to take, break it down into smaller, more manageable sections. So, to begin, starting out editing and formatting. Figure out what you want to write. Start by making a list of ideas for topics you want to write, or that you've been wishing someone else would write. Bounce ideas off friends and your favorite alter human groups, but don't just talk about your ideas. You've got to actually write them down. If you're unsure if you want to create a book all by yourself, or if you're wondering if you have enough content uh, for a single essay or story, consider making an anthology. Get together with friends and each contribute essays, stories, fiction, and poetry to the collection. Writing a book doesn't mean having to write the whole thing all by yourself. Brainstorming as a group is much easier than brainstorming alone. So here's some prompts for things you might want to write about, some inspiration. We really do need a basic introductory 101 all about other kin, Therians, and or alter humans, focused however tightly or widely as you want. Uh, and you can also write more specialized focused essays about particular subjects in alter humanism that interest you, like argumentative essays about topics that you feel strongly about, topics that you haven't seen discussed much, or things that you might have posted to a forum about but you want to go in, into more depth. And Another idea is alter human topics that you've researched in the library or in internet archives, or that you want to research. Or you could write a memoir about what it's been like for you as an alter human. How was discovering yourself as an alter human significant in how you grew up and matured? How has your alter humanism influenced your education, career, and social life? What has it been like for you getting to know others who are like yourself? And if you have past life memories or noema, you can write them out as a memoir. And it doesn't have to be nonfiction. You could also write fiction about beings such as yourself. You can write about them having romances, adventuring in sci-fi and fantasy settings, or a slice of life about what their ordinary days are like. You could write fiction about your stereotype or kin type, too. What would the memoir from the perspective of an ordinary, not anthropomorphic wolf look like? You can look to animal protagonist fiction like Raptor Red for inspiration, um, I see Warrior Cats was also suggested. They're a little bit more anthropomorphic, though. So you can also look for lots of lists that are out there of alter human writing prompts that other folks have come up with, too. There are websites with prompts and various writing challenges that may be useful uh, when parsing out what you feel drawn to writing about and what doesn't interest you. So we've got a list here that I'm going to drop into the chat. And while Orion's dropping that into the chat, Ooh. I'm... Yes? What? Um, it didn't paste with the links. So ah. these are just... Okay. So um, I'm going to fix that after I finish talking. Uh, we can share a bunch of the links uh, after the panel. 
Yep. Yeah. yeah. We will make sure to post the links for everyone to enjoy post panel since apparently they're not playing nice with Google Docs and Discord. <laughs> Um, but to address something that is probably, if not on your mind right now, will probably be on your mind or mentioned in the post-lecture uh, discussion. But Paige slash Orion slash Chimeras, what if people are mean to me about what I want to write? What if nobody reads it? And I'm going to tell you right now, it's important to keep in mind that when we're talking about this, you should be writing for yourself first and foremost. You can take other people's opinions into account, but you're writing for your own enjoyment, not anybody else's. Don't let other people tell you how, where, and when to create your art. And especially don't let community discourse or respectability politics restrain you from writing about what you think is important and relatable. In conclusion, as has been said in previous panels, fuck them! Alright, so then when you've got your topic, now what? Start out with a rough draft. Let your first draft be as big, messy, and rough as it wants to be, and don't worry about it. It's okay for your first draft to be a ramble, a rant, a rave. Uh, there is a maxim, write drunk, edit sober. This is popularly misattributed to the author Ernest Hemingway, but it turns out he was actually in favor of writing sober as well. The first draft can end up being way longer than you want it to be, and that's okay. You're going to trim it down later when you edit it. Don't try to trim it down while you're still writing the first draft. Just focus on getting it all written down during that stage. Expand, then contract. So here's how to do research, which is useful for writing fiction too. If you're writing a memoir about your present life, um, or if you need specialist knowledge from somebody too, you can interview other people who were there to see how they remember it. So here's how to interview. Ask them for permission to record them. You need that permission first. Bring a notepad where you have already written down good questions to ask them. Set aside some quiet time for you to focus on the interview together, maybe with coffee or something else to drink. Write notes during it. Ask for the spellings of names of people and places. Record audio of the interview too. When you listen to it later, you'll find more that you missed. Listen to it as you type up your notes to make sure they include everything instead of just figuring you'll remember it later. If you're completely new to a subject that you want to research, Wikipedia or other encyclopedias are a good starting point to get a basic all-around understanding of it. But don't stop there. Even reputable encyclopedias are flawed compared to books or videos by specialists in that topic. Move on to using the subject catalog in your local library or worldcat.org to find books on your topic. Find out which authors have good reputations in their fields and skip the ones who don't. When you find a book you like, use its bibliography to find more. And you can run a survey to collect the facts on what the, your community is really like. Paige? For some tips on running a survey, because God, if I don't have advice for this. Uh, first off, spread the survey as wide as possible to all applicable groups. The more responses, the better. Uh, make sure your questions don't lead into specific answers, whether intentionally or accidentally. And make sure you're defining pivotal terms or words that your respondents may not be familiar with, so that everybody's on the same page, wink, uh, being specific is seriously key. And when making questions on a scale or asking yes or no questions, do not leave a middle of the road option. Uh, don't ask a yes, no, maybe question. Instead, offer a write-in selection for individuals to detail their thoughts around the questions, and this helps to avoid central tendency bias. Uh, back to Orion. Okay, so there are also some more resources online for doing research, such as Zotero, which is a free website that helps you collect, organize, annotate, cite, and share research. And you can find databases such as JSTOR that help you locate open, open access material from academic journals and books. Your library's website may give you access to a lot of such databases, so ask your information desk. For nonfiction, it's important to cite all your sources correctly. You can find style guides for citing sources on Owl Purdue, plus lots of other resources on how to write and edit. And I'm going to paste this link in. This is uh, Owl Purdue's citation guide for MLA format. And importantly, make sure you cite your sources correctly from the beginning. If you leave this step for a later draft, it can be hard to find all the info again. Word processing software such as Microsoft Word and its free alternatives, Google Docs and LibreOffice, 
have a lot of features for automatically handling formatting so that it's easy for you to do. You can use them to automatically create a table of contents, footnotes, and an index for your book. You don't have to make those parts by hand. And if you're like me and have trouble sitting down and forcing yourself to write, or you find yourself constantly going back to try and edit and re-edit until you've forgotten your place and train of thought, or you're just paralyzed by perfectionism as a general rule, try these options out. Uh, the most dangerous writing app, which I am going to link, Badoop, is a writing tool where within a set time limit, if you stop writing, your contents are deleted. It includes a hardcore mode where it blurs out everything that you write, making you unable to reread any mistakes or typos that you make until the time runs out. So, uh, do or die. There's also NaNoWriMo, which you guys have probably heard me talk about before if you follow me on Tumblr or Twitter. Uh, it's a competition in November where you try to write a whole novel in a month. 50,000 words, and it makes for a great event that can help you bull rush the first draft of a project. It also has competitions in June and April for Camp NaNoWriMo, for anyone who's busy in November or who wants to set custom word goals, or who wants to take advantage of Camp NaNoWriMo's uh, cabin system and write with other people. Back to Orion. Alright, so then you're moving toward a final draft. In the next draft, clean it up. Reorganize it, Cut parts out that don't move it where it needs to go. Double check on spelling, grammar, punctuation, and word definitions. Then have some friends proofread it. It's important to remember that you don't have to enact your proofreader's suggestions. Listen to feedback offered, but if you feel that something is too important to change, then don't. If you're finding that a section looks strange or odd when you're reading it, consider reading it out loud. That can help you figure out what needs to be reworded or deleted entirely. Don't be afraid to let it sit for a few weeks or months on the shelf. Sometimes going over everything with a fine-toothed comb for the 50th time can warp how it sounds to you in comparison to how it sounds to someone reading it for the first time. Fresh eyes can be invaluable to your piece, and stepping away from it can give you room to breathe. If you say much about sensitive topics, like racism, ableism, and transphobia, hire a sensitivity reader to make sure that you don't accidentally say something offensive that could embarrass you later. Yes, pay someone to do this, it's worth it. All right, and Kai? Yes. Uh, so <laughs> now that you... Oh, sorry. <laughs> so now you have your completed work. Uh, one option is you simply post it to your personal website, sharing it as a doc or PDF file. Uh, this gives you full control over your document, including uh, when to take it down, what version you host, and what format to host and share it in. Uh, but there is also digital self-publishing companies. Uh, one test example is Kindle Direct Publishing. It is owned by Amazon, it's the, but it is the largest ebook retailer. Amazon does take 47% of the cut from normal sales and 60% from sales made through their extended distribution program. Royalty is paid after deduction, deducting Amazon's commission, uh, a fixed charge and a per page charge uh, from the book's listed price. Basically, fuck Amazon. Uh, iBooks is another exam uh, is another p potential one. Uh, it is owned by Apple. It is the second largest ebook retailer. However, you must own a Mac to publish directly on iBooks, unfortunately. Uh, and also, uh, they off they own they but they do offer a flat seventy percent royalty rate. Uh, but yeah, fuck Apple too. Uh, we're an equal opportunity. Fuck Capitalism and uh, Multi-Million Dollar Companies Lecture. Uh, another option is Lulu.com. Uh, it offers a 90% uh, uh, royalty-free for their eBooks. Uh, it can also, uh, eBooks made through Lulu can also be sold through Amazon, Barnes & Noble, etc. Uh, Kobo is another potential uh, is another potential uh, one. Bleh, words. Uh, it offers anywhere between uh, seventy-five percent and forty-five percent to seventy-five uh, royalties uh, from sales made, depending on the ebook's price. Uh, published content on this platform may not be compatible with non-Kobo uh, ebooks readers, though. Uh, a final example of where to self-publish could be itch.io. Uh, it is closer to a hosting website than a digital self-publishing company, but it is a very popular 
uh, website for content creators. Uh, H.io does take uh, take seventy uh, takes ten percent of every purchase of the fees pre-tax, but offers multiple advertising days every every year. And there's and every year uh, there are days where it takes zero percent for purchases. But, you know, digital self-publishing isn't your only uh, avenue. You can also print your own zines, handwrite it and scan it into a copier, or type it up on a computer and print it out, fold the pages hamburger style and staple it in the middle, or fold it and sew it if you want it to last better. Libraries can help you with printing, or they can at least tell you options where you can do it locally. There's also digital options for zine creation, such as the Electric Zine Maker and Clip Studio Paint X's fanzine creation options. I'm actually going to drop a link for the Electric Zine Maker in the chat. Check it out, it's really cool. Uh, you can circulate your zines in lots of places with your friends, mail them, sell them on Etsy, let other people print them out and fold them, put them in little free libraries if you want your neighborhood to know about Alter Humans. Uh, slip it in the bookshelves of local clubs for special interest groups, like your local LGBTQ center. You could even see if your public library accept, accepts handmade zines. There's also, a little bit more fancy, printed paperbacks as an option. Print on Demand, also called POD, also called Vanity Publishing, uh, is looked down on as not real publishing, and means you have to take care of a lot more of the work of creating a finished book than you would through a traditional publisher. But it is perfectly appropriate if you're just writing for a small niche audience that traditional publishers won't take on. Uh, binding options in POD tend to be cheap and not really made to last. Perfect bind means pages glued in place, which can fall out. Comb binding means a strip of plastic rings, which can crack. And usually they don't offer sewn binding, which is the best. But what sites are best for print-on-demand self-published books these days? Uh, Lulu, which we mentioned earlier, offers an 80% royalty for print books. There's CreateSpace, which is unfortunately also owned by Amazon, like the uh, Kindle Direct Publishing. And it also has the same royalty rates as the Kindle Direct Publishing. As we said before, fuck Amazon. There's also Barnes & Noble's press, previously called Nook, but it retails only to Barnes & Noble's retail locations and websites, and royalties range from 40% to 65%. Some traditional publishers focus on relevant, uh, relevant interest groups that might interest alter human content. Try asking furry publishers such as Sofa Wolf Press. Or ask publishers that specialize in spiritual topics, such as uh, Indian Press, Wiser, or Llewellyn. Uh, remember, read your contracts before you sign anything. And watch out for any shady publishers that tries to take away your rights to your work and, or rip you off. Uh, a little bit about the business side of, a business side of selling creative stuff. Having some clues about how to make a few dollars from your creative work can help you can help with modification and justify what you're doing. Maybe about selling selling on itch using Kofi or Patreon. And with that, that is our lecture. Thank you for attending. Um, we were hoping to host a discussion section afterwards if you guys would be interested, and yeah. potentially a little time for a Q and A since we still have half an hour. Yep, we've got plenty of time. We've got all the time in the world. And if anybody in the audience here uh, happens to know some more stuff that we didn't tell about making books and getting them published, share it in the chat. Oh yeah, please. This was very off the cuff in how we did this. It's our fault. It was less than eight hours. <laughs> yeah, it was like... did more than a phenomenal job doing this in just a couple hours, though. This is great. Agreed, agreed. I see the questions channel lighting up for us. Um, Puppyverse is asking if they can come on stage and ask a question. Would we prefer if people keep their questions to text? Since we already have three speakers. Uh, yeah, that might be a better way of doing it. Just because there's already three speakers. And we, we do want to have... Uh, a, we can do this. We're currently doing just Q&A. So, but we can, we'll be doing discussion afterward. Yeah, let's keep the Q&A to text 
So if you want to ask your question in text, Puppyverse, that's totally okay. And then for the discussion, I think it will be a lot. We'll be inviting people up to talk if they want. Several people are typing. Ah, that's threatening aura right there. Wait, it's not. Now, what did you all say? Can you explain it again? <laughs> oh, God, no, please. <laughs> do not. <laughs> Audience just being like, all right, encore, let's go, take two. Yeah, seriously, y'all did an amazing job on this lecture for putting it together so last minute. Like, I applaud y'all. Uh, Blue asks in the, quest in the question channel, uh, what are each of y'all's first alter human writings? Ooh. Um... I'll let, I'll let, I'll let Orion and Kaya talk first, actually, well, I think. No. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> okay. No. All right. Damn. Uh, for ourselves, uh, we actually recall the first thing that we really wrote, and it was actually fiction. It was a short story uh, involving a wolf theron that had a strong mental shift in the middle of the night while, while outside in their backyard. Never seen the light of day, but it did. It, but we did write it when we were in high school. The Do you first, still have it? probably, yes. Uh, we keep we, keep, we we scroll away everything, so yes, it's somewhere on our computer. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna read it when I come up there. I was gonna say, please uh, release it. It's it's so bad. We were like sixteen. I I'm sure it's wonderful. The first uh, alter human thing I ever wrote that I remember is this shitty essay on my deviant art. That I think, I hope I deleted, because it was bad. It was 14 pages of bad. And it was like my, ah oh god, I don't know, my senior year of high school or something. And it just, oh, it wasn't great. How about you, Orion? Oh, Orion just said no. <laughs> No well, I see right after that that said, what do you consider your best alter human writings? And I feel pretty proud of the Other King timeline. I put a lot of work into that. It is a pretty sweet piece of uh, document. I am very, very <laughs> thankful for that document. I have referenced it so much. We stand the Other King timeline. It's true. Uh, I guess for us, uh, kind of bounce to that since it's a similar question. Uh, for us, our Probably our best alter human writing, is, or at least the one we're most personally proud of, would be our a timeline of the Ther a history of the Theron community, just because of how much work we put into that. Uh, but it is closely tied with our academic publication uh, because of the fact that all the do every document that is referenced in that PDF file are things that we have archived personally. <laughs> So, uh, someone's asking if the writing server could be posted in advertisements. I mean, I am not their parent. Uh, follow your heart, man. Yeah, go for it. Uh, we don't own that. <laughs> um, did we... Uh, we haven't addressed Fiernan's question about publishing, right? Uh, uh, what are the advantages to publishing a book rather than posting online? And what are the dis disadvantages other than cost to produce an income? I mean, I... Importantly, none of us have actually done that. Yeah, that's actually what I was about to say. I know that uh, none of yeah, us have yeah, experience with that. Catch. None of the panelists here have actually traditionally published a book, or even... I don't think any of us have even done print-on-demand, have we? I have not. I want to, and I've looked into it, but I have not done print-on-demand. Yeah, so this is something that we've researched a bit... Um, each of us, but uh, we haven't actually done it. So if there's somebody in the chat who has done it, um, I hope that they will share some of the things that they learned. We're encouraging y'all to do it so so we can just kind of, yeah, you know, not you have to do that. <laughs> but yeah. we do know about writing books and all of the steps that come before publishing. <laughs> well, one thing to keep in mind oh, that might of be of in... Oh, sorry, Orion. Uh, no, you go ahead, Kai. Uh, the one thing we can think of is um, with uh, one positive comparing digital, at least from digital to uh, paper, is it's a lot easier to, uh, one negative is with digital, you can easily uh, share it and link it to people and they can just 
easily have a copy, whereas if it's a paper copy, people have to hunt down a buyer that sells those books. So there's a, a problem with the uh, ease of ease of finding, ease of purchase, ease of collecting. Uh, there's another couple more questions. Uh, Chaotic, curious if you have a Pacific, any Pacific tips with running a Zion specifically. A little off topic since it's not other, uh, super otherkin related, but I have wanted to know if any of you have any Pacific experience with this. Hey, Paige, you I, tried to make a <laughs> I do. Oh, and it haunts me to this day. Um, so for reference, I am in charge of the Inky Paw zine. Uh, which has still not gotten its first volume out. Don't look at me. I have executive dysfunction. Um, but in regards to running a zine, um, if you're running it by yourself, I don't have any tips for you because it's just it, you just kind of do it how you want. That's kind of the beauty of them, you know. And if you're running it with other people, where you're trying to make a group zine and you're trying to get it to be collaborative. I would generally recommend putting out a step one. Uh, I would interest check it. I would put out in the spaces you're going to advertise it or you're going to look for, you know, writers who want to apply to it. And I would be like, hey, does this interest you? This is the idea of the zine. This is what we would be focusing on. Would you guys participate? And if you do get a bunch of people being like, yeah, that sounds radical, then you just go from there and you advertise it in those spaces being like, hey, you know, you all reacted really positively to my interest check, so I'm going to go ahead, send, you know, uh, send your fiction pieces or your art pieces or whatever to this email or this Tumblr or wherever you're having it, the stuff be sent and then make an outline for, you know, what sort of material you're looking for. Like, if it has to be in a specific format or have a specific, like, font type or be of a readable size, like, just put those things in there. And then when people send you the stuff, you just kind of talk to them, be like, hey, this is perfect, or hey, you know, could you change one or two things? This isn't quite legible, or, you know, stuff like that. And then you just put it together and put it out there, wherever you like. I prefer itch.io for my stuff like this, because you can put it as a $0 thing, where it's just free and it's hosted on there. But some people use Gumroad, some people put it on Tumblr, you know, etc, etc. Okay, sorry, that went on for a bit. And I also have uh, some additional suggestions about uh, making a zine. Uh, definitely check out your local library because there are a lot of books that are collected about very informally made zines in the 90s and 80s. And some of them have a lot of advice about how to make them using um, very interesting handmade techniques, um, not just binding, but also Xeroxing tricks and things like that. And also, your local library may even have a collection of actual zines that you can look at for ideas about ways that people have made them, and it can be very inspiring. Let's see. Do we have more questions? Uh, Puppyverse. Uh, uh, puppy? Yes. Uh, oops, sorry. Uh, what, what tips and or advice would you give people that are struggling to match words to experiences in headspace or uh, other past, li past lives, memories, spirituality, etc. Also, uh, just tips on figuring out how to write about your own experiences in general. Um, I, I imagine we all have advice to give on this question, so I'll just go first and spip all mine. Something I found really helpful for doing the same is actually reading a lot. Reading a lot about how, how other people describe their headspaces and their experiences, seeing what words or phrases really uh, resonated with me personally. Also, reading a lot of fiction that I saw myself in was strangely helpful for kind of discovering what language would be most useful for me. I'll hand yeah, it off to you, Kai. Yeah, similar to Paige, uh, what helped us the most was one, reading other people's experiences on their own on the topic, and also to a later, and also agreeing with the fiction related stuff. Uh, for example, uh, reading the Animorph series introduced us to the word thought speak, which is a cool way for us to describe how we talk to each other in headspace, 
uh, which in turn morphed into various other words that we personally use to describe ways of communicating within our system. So we read it off of one top one term from a fictional series, and it's become a lexicon of different words. So sometimes that that helps. That actually does help. Do you have any thoughts, Orion? Uh, let's see. I think that's good advice. Um, and I, I think I would also encourage just keep messing around with writing things in a rough draft. If you are having a really hard time figuring out how to put things into words, just give it as many tries as you want. Um, you're not going to run out of paper if you're typing it up in a word processor. So just try as many different variations on a sentence as you possibly can until you come up with one that seems like it captures how it feels in your head. Uh, uh, Corian. Oh. No, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I fear I'm going to possibly pronounce your name wrong, but Corian, uh, Corian asks, any tips on writing alter-human characters in fiction? No, uh, depends on what flavor of alter humanity you're going for, to be honest. Uh, if it's one that you experience, I really, really highly recommend drawing from your own experiences in life. And if it's not, I recommend reading up on those experiences in every way you possibly can. And talking to people who have those experiences. Other than that, I wouldn't write an alter human character necessarily different different than I'd write a non alter human character outside of, you know, incorporating that into them as a character. That's my take on it, at least. Yeah, our only advice would be before you start writing, decide what you want to. What is your goal of the writing? Do you want to write something that is very fictional, like, like physical shifting werewolves, etc., but the, the core of the, the book has themes regard that are related to alter humanity or that alter humans would really relate to versus a character that is closer to a real-life alter human. So uh, kind of brainstorm on what you want to do with your story, and that will kind of uh, make groundwork for what you're going to actually write. And I would also advise to do some thought about what kinds of tropes you yourself would and would not like to see in representation of alter human characters in fiction. Um, you can spend some time browsing around on TV tropes, maybe set a timer, it's very addictive, um, and take a look at what kinds of tropes might be attributed, uh, applicable to the characters that you have in mind, and which tropes you feel are really problematic or that you just are really sick of and don't like. TV tropes can be helpful for also figuring out if certain kinds of character tropes are overdone or have problematic implications. Uh, should we do next question? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Rainwolf asks, if I ever were to publish a book slash autobiography based on my personal experience as a wolf therian, would that be acceptable to the community as I'm not LGBT and I'm Christian? Or would it be a bad idea since I'm in the minority? Uh, I mean... We know what our motto is this con. Yeah. The motto is, fuck them. And the motto is, keep writing. I As yeah. long as you're not you know, saying anything strange about the LGBT and non-Christian parts of the community, there's absolutely no reason you shouldn't publish a book or an yeah, autobiography. Yeah, you don't worry about respectability politics. Just write what, what is true for you. Write what you want to write. It doesn't ha even have to be for other people um, initially as you're writing it. I mean, if you're thinking about publishing it, sure. At, at some point, there'll be a point where you need to think about your audience. But when you're in that rough draft stage where you're just pouring your heart out, do that. You don't have to worry about what other, what other people will think. Dance like nobody's watching. Uh, Fernan asks, any suggestions for someone who sits down to write and their mind just goes blank? This hits me while I'm trying to write this question. Well, now. Uh, hi, Mirror. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, at least for us, our best way is we think better when we're walking around uh, or just moving around in general. So sometimes if we're just staring at something and we're not getting anything through, we will just stand up and pace and walk around for a bit. Uh, sometimes talking about the topic out loud. Um, Any more, uh, uh, a number of writing documents come with a text, uh, a uh, a a program where it listens to your speech and writes it on the page for you. Uh, so if you're much more of a, you talk faster than you can write, that could be a nice way to at least roughly get some of the thoughts down before you know they fly fly off in space. That's one one thought. Yeah, honestly, big same for all of that. I know for me, when we have that problem, uh, what works for me is completely switching gears. Whatever I'm trying to write, I stop. I, I throw it out the window, I open up a new Word document, and I write something completely fucking different to kind of be the sort of uh, a palate cleanser, for lack of a better way to, to put it. Like when you just have a whole chunk of ginger when you're eating sushi and you eat the entire thing at once, it's meant to function that way. And that usually shocks me into figuring shit out. Uh, shall we go to the next question or? Sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm uh, a little late, so apologies if someone already asked this, but any advice for writing non-human in body and mind characters that possible human audiences can still parse, especially when their instincts and social lives are so different from most humans? I mean, people will figure it out. Like, not to reiterate the whole fuck em thing, but people, I feel like, will generally figure it out. Uh, don't coddle your audiences is something I strongly adhere to. Um, if people can understand, you know, really complex sci-fis with completely alien characters in physiological physiology and culture and everything else, then there's no reason that they shouldn't be able to understand whatever non-human character you're writing. Yeah, and uh, kind of bouncing off of that, as far as writing... The general motto we've heard time and time again is uh, show, don't tell. So uh, one thing you could do is read several books uh, that either relate to non-human characters uh, or supernatural characters like werewolves, etc. Or even find books that are that people talk about that have a lot of alter human there and uh, other kin themes in them and kind of inspire by reading how the author talks about the kind of introduces those experiences and topics into their narrative and kind of brainstorm on how you can also uh, inform the audience about your character without having to info dump a bunch of characters talking about stuff that they should already know. All right, and it seems like we've gotten... No, we, mm, I'm a liar. We don't have all the questions. There's one more. Yeah, we skipped some in the middle there. We did? I thought we did. Have we missed anybody? I mean, uh, we did just have a, a new question that just got posted, but I don't think we skipped anyone in the middle. I mean, I didn't answer the what do you consider your best alter human writing one, but... Uh, yeah, if we missed your question, please post in the chat, let us know. Um, the newest question posted is, as someone who contemplates writing deep dives rather than general overviews, how would one balance not coddling your audience with not getting lost in terminology and niche concepts? As somebody who writes in a really, really niche field who's had to kind of find that balance when writing for other kin who don't know anything about religious studies... Um, kind of a good rule of thumb is to not use heavy jargon. Don't use jargon that your audience isn't going to be familiar with, or if you find that you really have to and can't avoid it, then define it in very simple terms that aren't, that don't use, you know, other forms of jargon. Um, generally try not to go into those, like, really, really complicated niche concepts until you've already built your starting foundation and then go up from there. Like, don't assume what your audience knows. 
Unless you're writing for an audience that already fills that niche. Yeah, that's one thing that we have done in the past with uh, talking about a topic in nonfiction is uh, we might not instead of using a community term, we might give a brief definition of what the term basically means in its place. Or when we introduce the term, we also give a brief definition. Uh, for example, when we talk about our plurality, uh, instead of saying fronting, we say uh, being in control of the body. Or we might say uh, switching, ergo, uh, which means uh, you know changing who is in control of the body. So kind of gently either skipping over using jargon or give very... Uh, uh, give very brief descriptions of what the term means without breaking your flow and becoming and uh, your writing end up being nothing but definitions. Right. That is, that is basically the right idea. Um, just avoid using specialized terminology, say it in plain English in every way that you possibly can. And if you must use specialized jargon, give definitions and introduce some of the basic concepts so that at least to make sure that everybody's on the same page somewhere in the beginning. And someone uh, suggest having a glossary or a dictionary at, at any point in your writing as well, which, yeah, that can also be a, a workaround. The person, oh, Dosky posted a jargon, my beloved meme, and I do second that. Uh, Fernan writes, any suggestions for using something other than PDF? I find that on mobile, they're, uh, on mobile they're still sized for a desktop, making it hard to read. I, uh, don't have that issue on my Android. So I am really not sure of what a better alternative would be. Yeah, unfortunately uh, Ryan, for us. Yeah, unfortunately for us, we almost exclusively write our stuff in docs or PDFs when we're ready to post stuff online. So I, we really don't know of too many other formatting types, unfortunately. It should be possible to uh, export from docs into um, Word document format uh, to export that into EPUB. But I haven't looked into how to do that yet. EPUB is what's ideal for reading on mobile. Um, and, uh, it's, it's also very accessible because it allows people to change a lot of details about the formatting, like, uh, font size and typeface size and, um, typeface, uh, which is really important for accessibility. I haven't looked into that. Um, and also if you're writing something in HTML or directly into a website like Dreamwith, it's also, um, well... Actually, Dreamwith has that problem where you have to have a special style set so that it's mobile friendly. It has to be a um, special style set up so that it will be dynamic in its layout. But a lot of websites will automatically reflow so that they'll fit onto small screens like mobile. Also, so Sin is, uh, Djox does. Pardon? Sorry, Sin was saying that uh, they don't think that Google Docs does let you export to EPUB, but Google Docs does, so that is an option. My bad. Okay. Sorry, go on, Orion. Uh, yeah, you could probably um, uh, export to uh, .doc format first and then export to other formats using some exterior external tool. And I just haven't found an external tool that handles that yet. Uh, that's something that I've been meaning to look into for a long time. Since I'm not happy with how my own PDFs on my website are something that is letter size and you really can only either print out or view on a large computer screen and a lot of people don't have those options oh um uh, we've got somebody adding if anyone wants a place that exports directly to epub i use read c and it's pretty great and completely free that is nice thank you uh thank you dino canid for adding that Alrighty, uh, we have six minutes left, but we could probably get into some brief, at least throwing the discussion questions we have out there for people to think about. Right. 
Yeah. Do you want to read some of the the idea questions off? Yeah, sure. Um, so in the course of this panel, some things we wanted to ask all of y'all out there in the audience was, what do you want to see in a book about other kin? And what do you absolutely not want to see in a book about other kin? Um, how would you guys feel about, instead of books on other kin, you know, books about alter humanity in general? And if you guys have ever wanted to publish something about, you know, other kin or other alter human communities and experiences, how did it go? And if you guys decided to not do that, then why? What was your sort of reasoning? I'll post these questions also in chat so you guys can see them and I'm not just rambling and everyone's oh, that's like... Right. We were going to post links in chat too, I just remembered. Oh yeah, the links! I mean, great. We're uh, going to go grab uh, those links. Start <laughs> what? We're just being great panelists, aren't we? Yeah, totally forgetting the links that we promised everyone. <laughs> Anonymous Moose on the Google Docs is getting that. I'm going to guess that's Orion. Just, just so you don't know, the only thing... <laughs> um, you, okay, you want me to do that part? Oh, uh, sorry, Sid. Uh, the only thing that we have on the schedule is in 20 minutes, so if you guys do want to open up the discussion on here, we totally can. Okay, the... How about y'all? Do y'all want to kind of give give us a little bit more time to talk about this, or you're like, please let's just, let's leave. This was this was a terrible idea. I, I think, think this was we great did. Idea. I, I think we did all right. I think everyone enjoyed y'all did it. Y'all did all right. Yeah. Actually, y'all did amazing. You got y'all yeah. did amazing. No one can say otherwise. Exactly. Oh, I saw the questions channel light up. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh. Hilliard said, this was one of the best panels of the con. And Rainwolf said, my favorite panel. That's really flattering. Thank y'all. That's Yeah, that's flattering, given how quickly we had to scramble this together. <laughs> if there's anybody that could do it, it's y'all. So I don't know. It still got a little tight towards the end. I think you guys had too much planned, even for like the discussions. So I don't. I think y'all did completely fine. So, but yeah, if there's anything I really want all y'all to take away from this panel, can't speak on Orion and Kai's behalf, obviously. But if there's something I want y'all to take, please write. Please consider writing. There are options to write, and you should write. Do it. I believe in you. I support you. I give you, like, permission to, if your first draft sucks, that's awesome, that's cool, that's perfect. I still want to see it, even if you never go farther than that first draft that you have mixed feelings about. I believe in you. You can do it. Right. Fuck the haters. Yeah, if there's anything people take away from this panel, I hope it's uh, the idea that writing is a wonderful thing to do and sharing your experiences with others is a a treasure of this community uh so yeah right uh if you don't want to make a book make a website uh, make a blog dedicated to your experiences uh sharing is a very wonderful thing and I see some of y'all in chat are going, oh, well, I already write. Good! Keep writing! Write more! Inspire your fellow alter humans and your peers! Everyone get a Neo Cities now. I mean, get a website if you'd like to. I do think it's very useful for hosting your own writing. Also, okay, Orion just posted it. the link in panel one chat. Woo! Those are the links to the writing prompts. And also communities where uh, where you can take part in those. Yes, keep writing. You're valid indeed. Yeah, and seriously, if you're stuck, if you don't know where to go, use those prompts and challenges. Explore those communities. The Fiction Kind community on Dreamwith has been dropped here multiple times through the convention, I'm already aware. But hopefully the other links will be of use to y'all who haven't seen them before as well. I recommend... I recommend everything. Just write. I believe in you. Also, I see that people are answering the discussion questions, and I appreciate all of y'all.
Uh, it is seven. Do we just want to, do we think this is a good spot to just leave off of here? What do you think, chat? Why would you ask the chat? You know what they're going to say. <laughs> chat is in slow mode because several people are typing. Uh, the, for the uh, questions channel, the chat is in the panel one chat. Or the links are in the panel one chat. My encore, encore, absolutely not. Uh, thank you, though. <laughs> All right, everybody uh, is seeming pretty... <laughs> Redo the panel real quick. I wasn't listening. Absolutely not, Finn. This panel was recorded, so you, we, I'll send you the link in about 15 minutes. <laughs> um, oh, uh, something I actually wanted to ask... Uh, Y'all and also Orion and Kai. Um, do we want to post our script for this in chat for people to read it? Sure. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, especially because there's some data in there, except that part where you swore a page. Shall, shall I'm, I I'm keeping that. that. No, no, you have to keep it in. You have to keep it in and your response to that. Okay, authenticity. All right. Authenticity. We have to, you know, archival purposes. All right, I'm changing. Anyone with the link can view it. Okay, all y'all. Here was the script and uh, has all of the links that we mentioned and then realized wouldn't copy-paste over for this uh, lecture. Thank you all so much for joining. I hope you have a great rest of your night or day, whatever time zone you may be in. And I hope you took away from this panel, fuck them and keep writing. Yes, thank you, everyone. Write those Thanks. books. Thank you so much for coming and listening to us.